If you're thinking about selling your vehicle, maybe picking up an Escalade V, ditch the hassle and use Carmigo. Special thanks to them for supporting this channel. Carmigo collects offers from a nationwide network of dealerships, so you get the best price for your car, truck, or SUV. It's very simple, that's the whole point. Just click on the link in the video description, then fill out some information, upload some photos, and then name the price that you want. If you don't sell your car, you pay nothing. If you do, normally it's a $350 fee, but if you click on that link in the video description, you get $50 off for being a driven viewer. And Carmigo does all the heavy lifting, all of the paperwork, and you get paid right away. Such a deal. Plus, you don't have to take out ads or deal with strangers. The Cadillac Escalade V is a lot of things. One thing it isn't, quiet. <laughs> That's so awesome. Cadillac's Escalade is no shrinking violet, never has been. It's large, what you'd expect from a brand historically known for tail fins the size of aircraft wings. It's luxurious, the best cabin execution GM offers. And plug your ears, because this is the Escalade V, a letter Cadillac uses to express maximum velocity. This is the most powerful, most sophisticated, most Escalade-y Escalade ever, even if the visual isn't nearly as loud as the exhaust. Escalade has never received the V treatment, and if you want it now, it's going to cost you. Pricing starts at just over $150,000 with shipping, as tested, $155,000. Keep in mind that a similarly equipped sport model goes for about $40,000 less. Here's what that extra cash buys uh, compared to a standard Slade. The fascias are new, though this looks a lot like the Sport. The tails redo is a lot more menacing with quad pipes. There are badges, those are kind of subtle. Black trim too, again, similar to Sport. And these 22 inch wheels are unique to the V. A little surprise, these are all seasons, not summer performance rubber. Inside there's some trim changes and badging, but overall the V is as stealthy as an Escalade can be when parked. It's what you don't see that makes the difference. One exhaust pipe has a French horn curly Q in its run, so they're equal length. Six piston Brembo front brakes get the red treatment, which matches the fob. There's an adjustable air suspension and the newest version of GM's awesome magnetic ride control. The rear suspension is independent. It's full-time all-wheel drive, no four high or low settings. The 6.2 liter V8 is no larger, but it packs 682 horsepower and 653 pound-feet of torque in the V because it's supercharged. The unit is larger than the one found on the CT5 V Blackwing. The engine is hand-built using beefed-up components to handle the extra stress. Maybe buy Morgan a beer next time you're in Detroit to say thanks. The splash screen on entry is something owners will enjoy, especially at a price of over 150 grand. That LED in the steering wheel is for Super Cruise. The neighbors won't be thrilled about the V though, especially if you commute early in the morning. It's chest rattling loud, kind of surprised it's legal. The note is adjustable and there's a stealth mode, but it's practically worthless. The volume and menacing snarl is like snap, crackle, and pop possessed by Lucifer himself. The gearbox is a 10-speed that's nearly telepathic. I'm not a fan of these electric selectors, but uh, that's progress, I suppose. And these will get used because they're fun. Drive modes, uh, yes, there are a few of them, and they make a big difference, especially the custom setting that I used a lot. And there's V mode. For starters, it drops the ride height 20 millimeters, or 8 tenths of an inch for us Americans. It can also be tuned to a driver's personality. The standard Escalade's no slouch when it comes to acceleration. The V drops the benchmark 0 to 60 runs easily by a second and a half, 4.4 seconds according to General Motors, using launch control. 
Remember, this weighs over three tons, 6,200 pounds, some 2,800 kilos. It's hard to imagine something this big rocketing up to speed with such control and no drama, except when it comes to sound. <laughs> then there's drama, uh, good drama. Your ears will love it, even if others won't. All this power comes with great responsibility. Good binders are critical in a vehicle like this. Uh, let's check out those Brembo brakes, okay? Here we go. Good stopping power uh, to the point where the coffee that I had in the back is now all over the floor. Uh, good firm pedal modulation. And then of course, there is that engine note taken off. Nice, nice, nice. Other SUVs with monster engines stuffed in them? Well, there's Jeep Wrangler 392. That's fun, uh, until the roads get twisty. The V8-motivated Land Rover Defender is considerably better. I've not driven the Mercedes-AMG GLS 63 or BMW XB7 Alpina, but I can say the Caddy is impressive from behind the tiller. The driving dynamics of the Escalade V are excellent. Magnetic ride control is nearly magical. Uh, no, this is not a sports car, but chucked into a corner. Body movements are very nicely controlled. You'd almost think that this is a crossover, but no, it's a body on frame truck and the 10 speed transmission. Nice, quick shifts. It almost feels like a dual clutch. The ride quality is never flinty. The structure quiver free. The biggest issue, no pun intended, is the size. It doesn't feel like driving a city bus, but in tight urban conditions and parking garages, there are some pucker moments. And this isn't even the extended ESV model, which can be had as a V. The seating position is high. A supplemental oxygen, maybe? Once you've reached cruising speed, the Escalade V is as quiet as any Escalade, which means it's pretty darn quiet. But if you want to hear the note, easy to hear. So you've got quiet, you've got drama, it's all good. Love that burble. Gosh, that's great. Nasty stuff. With the destination plugged into the Navi system, there's augmented reality prompts, helpful, but I can see where this setup could give the driver motion sickness. Personally, I don't like large vehicles, but plenty of people do. Apparently, they don't mind frequent trips to the gas station. Fuel economy. Well, the EPA rates the average and on premium fuel at 13 miles per gallon. Does that surprise anyone? Anyone? Yeah, I didn't think so. This is no friend to the environment, a reminder that Cadillac is phasing gas engines out for electric drivetrains. Super Cruise on this tester was not operational, but it's the best semi-autonomous driving system that I've used. Oh, and towing? This will tug 7,000 pounds. I like the cockpit of this Escalade. It's a far cry from the first generation when it looked like a slightly nicer Chevy Tahoe. Nearly every panel is unique now. Touches like the design here and the Mondrian pattern in the semi-aniline leather catch the eye. And yes, that's purple or dark auburn. Seats are heated and vented, massage too. This is zebra wood, it's real. Uh, wood, not zebra. And then there's the OLED screen with 38 inches of diagonal display. It's actually three of them, but integrated so well, it's hard to tell. This section is for infotainment, so the passenger can get to it. The center section houses all the information you could want, uh, other than a rapidly falling gas gauge. Here's where things are adjusted. The maps can fill the entire display or select the augmented reality screen. And then there's something that Cadillac brought to the automotive industry first, night vision. Uh, think it's a gimmick? I grew to like it, especially in inky dark Seattle where pedestrians all seem to wear black at night, head to toe. People are highlighted easily a hundred yards away. It even picked up a rabbit crossing the road. 
This would be awesome in rural areas with a lot of deer. And as long as it's dark, here's a look at the ambient lighting. There's a rainbow of choices. Escalade could single-handedly amplify light pollution. It's not as cool as Lyric, but it is bright. The AKG Studio Reference 36 speaker audio system is in my top three. Magnificent sound with a lovely spatial quality. This big glass roof is standard. There are the expected places to squirrel things away. The only real options on this Escalade are Super Cruise at $2,500 and the $700 fridge with freezer function. Things stay very cold. Door pockets have rough edges and no lining, more GMC than top shelf Cadillac, and there are some plastics that look generic for this price. The user interface is super easy to use and extremely responsive. GM doesn't get its due there. No natural language control using voice prompts, though. Uh, chances are you'll just use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. I like the design of the phone charger. Too bad it was hit and miss juicing up my iPhone 13 Pro. Escalade V has belts for seven. Those in the second row should be pretty comfortable. I'm five foot nine, I have decent headroom. Knee and leg room is what you make it. Maybe show those in row three a little compassion, huh? The kids can watch all sorts of streaming sources through the built-in high-speed internet service. Maybe brush up on the more pedestrian Escalade models. There are four sets of AKG wireless headphones that also pair with smartphones. Separate climate zone, check. Heated seats, yes, but not vented here. All the power ports you'd want, too. The floor is flat, so climbing between the seats to the back row is easy. Maybe do that if there are car seats mounted in the mid row, since <laughs> that would end in tragedy. Uh, it's easy to scoot back here. Vans would be even easier. Generally, this is the part of the review where I get into the third row of an SUV and complain about how tight and cramped it is, but it's kind of roomy back here. I have the same amount of headroom that I have in the second row. With these slid about halfway, there's enough knee and leg room for an adult, and the cushions are high enough so that there's actually some thigh support. That almost never happens in a three-row crossover SUV. Two adults will be okay back here. Three kids will be perfectly fine. No cheaping out on the materials back here. They look good. This is a Cadillac. I'd like to see heated seats back here. That's something that you can find on Kias and Hyundais. And no pockets on the seat backs. But there are USB ports and some cup holders. Other than what looks like a few plastic pieces inside, Escalade shares almost no panels with other GM body-on-frame SUVs like Tahoe, Suburban, and Yukon that use the T1 truck platform. I believe it's just the roof, and only NBA players will see that, uh, maybe the doors. Yeah, you'll pay dearly for this, the signature vertical DRLs and lightsabers stolen from Emperor Palpatine. Uh, this doesn't have the panache of a Range Rover, but it's much less trucky than the Chevy or GMC. There's a lot going on with the tailgates. If you're parked on a steep incline and loading a lot of small things like volleyballs, you can just throw them in here and they won't roll out. Plus, it's nice. You can just reach in and grab things. This is not just a badge. It's an open by elbow badge. And yeah, there is a kick to open feature. Also, this is not a door, it's a tailgate. And if it's raining, you can seek shelter. We here in Seattle like that. And check this out. Oftentimes, behind the third row of an SUV, there's not much cargo space, but this is seven packs of TP. That's like seven carry-on suitcases. This is 25 and a half cubic feet. That's nearly twice as much space as some SUVs. And under here, you can stash small things like computers. Just remember to turn them off. Thieves can detect sleeping laptops and tablets. Those can even be charged back here. No bag hooks or straps like those found in European sport utes. Escalade's load floor is on the higher side, but not bad for class. Row three is powered down and up, helping to keep clothes clean and rotator cuffs injury free. If you're in a hurry at the lumber yard, the mid row drops from here as well. You can even let people into row three. This is 121 cubic feet. 
The TP trunk test is always done with seating for four. Because of the independent rear suspension, GM engineers carved out significant room for cargo. 73 cubic feet behind row two is impressive. Only vans beat that. I brought out 20 packs of softness and absorbency and probably could have wedged one more in. And you can still see out the back. These camera systems are excellent. Time to close this out with red light, green light. Green lights. A fire-breathing model of any vehicle is always welcome. The V is mighty sassy. The controlled driving dynamics are impressive for a large body-on-frame SUV. There's some excellent tech and the AKG surround sound system that won't be found anywhere else. There's a lot of usable space for families. That's not always the case with truck-based utes. Yellow lights. Nimble for a big boy, it's still a large machine for city driving. Not all the tech is cutting edge, none of the natural voice commands that Mercedes does so well. The cabin is lavishly trimmed with a few Chevy panels and some creature comforts that are missing. Red light. You really have to want the V, it's expensive. I felt bad for my neighbors every time I ignited the supercharged V8, that sound can't be legal. This has a serious drinking problem. Real world, I saw around 11 MPG on premium fuel. It's not like Cadillac is pumping the V out like Silverados. This will be a rare sight, though unmistakable by bone-shaking sound alone. Does anybody really need a machine like this? No, uh, we don't need ice cream either, but it's really good, right? This is loads of fun, it really is. The sound, awesome. But you gotta keep in mind, the sport model is $40,000 less. So ask yourself, is it worth the extra cost? Escalade finally gets the V treatment. It's not the driving machines that CT4 and CT5V Blackwing sedans are, physics does not curry favor, but if you want a rapid transit system that hauls the whole family, plus a boat or camper, this is a conspicuous way to get the job done. I'll be perfectly honest with you. When I drove the original Escalade over 20 years ago, I assumed it would be a failure, much the way the Cimarron was. Like the little caddy, it was clearly a bougie Chevy with a couple pieces of different trim and better leather, it fooled no one. Now, it's an icon and brings in Cadillac's youngest and wealthiest buyers. I'm happy to embrace my mistakes since I make so few of them. <laughs> I can say that my wife isn't here. As always, hey, Martin, come on up here. Martin Campbell, everybody. Could not do these reviews without Martin. He drives while I shoot running footage. Are you watching videos back there? Yeah, I'm watching Driven. You live Driven. Why watch it? I'd be bored. All right, time to go clean up that coffee I dumped while braking. That's how I feel about the Cadillac Escalade V. Before I go, a lot of people are very curious about the TP trunk test, so here are the cliff notes. Why do I do it? Well, it's visual. If I tell you this is 110 cubic feet, that doesn't mean anything to you. But if I stuff 20 bundles of softness and absorbency back here, that means something. And these are about the same size as a carry-on suitcase, inherently funnier, so it's a really good standardized measurement metric. No, I don't buy it. For 20 years now, I've gone into Costco, wheeled it out, stuffed it in, wheeled it back, and then restocked it. A lot of people think that I work here. And that, folks, is Costco number one. This is the location where Costco all started. And you might be wondering why I don't just buy a bunch of this stuff. Well, for starters, it's expensive. It's like 20 bucks a bundle. and. I don't have a very big garage. I have no place to store it. Plus, this plastic, it's not very durable. After about two or three load-ins, it kind of rips, and there would be TP all over the place. So there you go. That is TP Trunk Test 101. I think that deserves a subscription, right? Uh, click notifications, too. Follow me on social media, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments. But you don't have any more questions about the TP trunk test. That's driven. 
I'm Tom Volk.